Welcome, welcome. This is my response video to a response video. I know I do them rarely. Uh, I've already finished the whole video. I'm just sitting here and editing, and I thought, you know, I should put up parts of his response video to provide a backdrop so people understand before I begin my response. So here it is. I'll, I don't know how much of this I'll play. I'll comment in the background. Here we go. One good thing about Common Joe is that he is consistent. Ah, well, thank you. And Oh, by the way, sorry. This guy's a lawyer. Claims to be a real bar member. And he's... Me and James Freeman are his, like, favorite people to insult. <laughs> Say we don't know what we're doing, and all this jurisdiction is a bunch of nonsense and all that. Uh, his name is Mer Beast. I'll introduce him later. Don't worry about that. Here's the rest of his video. But thank you. Some people say that about the truth, that it's consistent. He's very consistent. He's consistently wrong. He's consistently uninformed. And he's consistently misinformed. Okay. Let's hear your examples. He thinks he's winning. He thinks he's scoring points on this one. So I have a little section here highlighted. And we're going to we're going to go ahead and read this comment and we're going to see where he falls flat on his face. I sure hope so. That's a powerful bold statement. So a motion to dismiss can come before evidence is presented if the prosecutor fails to allege all the elements of a crime. Your words. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm Those are my words and that is the current state of the law. Yes. Congrats. Now, I'll go into more of this in the video, but uh, isn't evidence presented, like, let's just say, traffic stop? Cop gives you a ticket. That's not presenting evidence of jurisdiction and authority. How could you possibly enter a motion to dismiss before that happens? Congratulations. In all the times I've asked a judge if jurisdiction is an element, I've only gotten distractions or yes. Well, he goes on about my comments. Here's another instance. If you don't know that you're about to be arrested because a bunch of paperwork has gone back and forth between a complainant to the prosecutor's office, a detective, and a judge, a bunch of paperwork and evidence has gone all over the place between those four people. You don't even know it yet. You get arrested. They don't even have to tell you why. They don't even have to show you the warrant. How in the hell can you enter a motion to dismiss before all of that evidence is being presented among themselves? You can't. Only after you're arrested. Can you? So obviously evidence has been presented before you even know about it, let alone can enter a motion to dismiss. It just depends on what you define as evidence, and I go into that in the video, so I won't comment too much here. Here's just the rest of it, or most of it. Um, jurisdiction is an element. It's actually two elements. It has to be you, the indictment or the criminal complaint, has to state that it was you who did it, which means that a grand jury or a magistrate found that it was probable cause, the probable cause existed that you did it. And it also has to state that it happened in the state of Texas. Obviously, I'm going to have differences there. We'll t I'll talk about it later. I mean, we're talking about Texas because Common Joe is in Texas. So the indictment or criminal complaint would have to allege that you did it within the state of Texas, whatever it is, which means that a grand jury or a magistrate found probable cause that you did the crime in whole or in part in the state of Texas. Objection point of clarification. What is the state of Texas? Who specifically is the state of Texas? And if you're going to claim it's the public, why is not the public represented here? Why is a bar member represented here? And further, has the public truly even been harmed or damaged in any of this or is this just a big extortion scheme for-profit prisons contracts stuff like that i've never heard a judge in person or recording ever say no to that well that's because it's it <laughs> therefore <laughs> has a prosecution <laughs> he ain't got nothing there so he just continues Kishin ever presented factual evidence regarding the element of jurisdiction no presented factual evidence before evidence is presented presented factual evidence before evidence is presented how pray tell joe would the prosecution present factual evidence before evidence is presented obviously i didn't say that Okay, up here are your words. 
your words. This is a hypothetical scenario where a motion to dismiss can or cannot come, logically according to you. Down here are my words of a real world scenario. And I'm sorry if you missed the transition. That's what that meant with your words, dot, 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 dot. Now I continue with mine, right? In all the times I've asked the judge if jurisdiction is an element, real world, I've gotten distractions or yes. I've never heard a judge in person or recording ever say no to that. So, therefore, has the prosecution ever presented factual evidence regarding the element of jurisdiction? As of yet, no matter if it's just the cop giving you the traffic ticket, all the way to now, has any factual evidence been presented whatsoever? I'm giving you the chance to even go back to the cop, not even the prosecutor, which is outside of the, you know, the, the cop isn't the prosecutor. It's outside the scope of the duties, quote unquote. In any of it, has anything been provided for factual evidence regarding the element of jurisdiction? No. So one's hypothetical and the other one's real world. One is your words and one is mine. And you're like, he, uh, 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 it's the same thing and he's saying different things. Oh, Jesus. You really passed the bar, really? I mean, all right. I think if you're paying attention, you can see why I come to the conclusion. This is even edited. He edited this. Dude, if I edit something, it's for spelling or more, more likely I'll add a couple of lines at the end to further clarify. I am not going in there and and when the, see that six hours ago edited means I haven't touched it in six hours, meaning I wrote it and it's oh, a typo, fixed it and then left it alone for six hours. So don't, please don't pretend like I'm editing something to be shifty. Give me a break. He proofed it and edited it. You don't know what I did. I'm the one who did it. I just told you how I did it and what I did it, uh, why I did it. Meaning that this is six hours ago. This is more or less what he intended. I say what I mean. I mean what I say. What's so difficult about this? You're trying to score a point here on this edited, but I don't see how you're even coming close. And then there's the typical sovereign citizen ranting beyond it. And uh, he's going to. Oh, yeah. See. <sighs> logical fallacy after logical fallacy. He calls me a sovereign citizen. And I hate everything about sovereign citizen. I hate it. They're full of claims they can't defend or clarify. There's not. It's not logical. Okay. It doesn't have any power. It relies on words to save you when only public and political pressure can really save you. And he just. Throws it in a box and throws it away. They never do because there is no consent because this is all legalized crimes by a tyrannical organization calling itself government. And I'm not going to do it again here, but I go into this in the video. So I'm just going to keep on pressing. You'll see later. Make a good video over this one. Yes, I, I can't wait to not watch it. Yeah, don't watch it then, dude. I know you're going to watch it. I know you're going to watch it. You're not going to be able to help from watching it. Because you're going to be like, oh, what are people saying? What are people saying? You're going to read the comments. You're going to be like, oh, i got to defend myself. i got to defend myself. <laughs> and they're going to go in. Where me, I, this is the first response video I've ever made in quite some time. I can't remember the last one I made. And it's, it's, you're only going to get one. And I mentioned that at the end of this video. This is the only one I'm doing for you. That's it. But it's only because you're a bar member. And it's extremely rare to have a bar. You're the only one I know of. To have a bar member come on here and actually say, Mark Stevens' motion is dismissed. And all these challenges about jurisdiction are bullshit. That's the only reason why I'm doing it. But you're going to you're gonna watch my video. Oh, Murby, you're not going to be able to keep from watching it. Because I don't sub you, but whatever. Maybe somebody will point it out to me. If you don't sub me, why have you already made three response videos directly about me, calling me Common Joe? If you don't watch my material or anything, how the hell do you even know to make such material for your own channel? <laughs> and, and I'll pin it and everybody can go and give you give you money by watching your videos and i get no money from watching videos i have gotten some money through paypal and if you knew how little it was you'd be shocked it's definitely under a thousand dollars of all time and that's usually for my time that they're buying some people just oh here here man i want to buy a lunch you know hey i want to buy a gas to this event i know you're going to i don't get money from youtube i explained this before They've demonetized everything. I can't pull it out. They won't let me. I've tried. I know how to do it. They will not. They won't even on my new channel. 
they I'll put in whatever phone number that's legitimate and it comes back and says invalid try again they won't let me progress with AdSense I don't make money on YouTube fool and have a good laugh at your expense but you'll profit from it so whatever they won't be having a laugh at my expense and I don't profit from it you're just wrong on so many levels and that's just at the end here I, I tear his positions apart and I hope you enjoy man enjoy what's coming for you this is pretty it was really entertaining to make I hope it's entertaining to listen to but it's he's gonna pretend like he's not watching <laughs> welcome welcome to a response video my gosh I don't make these that often right it uh, takes something special to get me to go to the trouble to make one of these it takes up my time and uh, there's value here so I want to introduce you if you're not already familiar with some guy named Merbeast Merb 34 ST because he's clever like that um, where's the value this guy claims to be a licensed bar member attorney in the true sense of the word and I uh, agree with that. I mean, I find it more likely that he is than he isn't. So uh, there's value to be gained in learning how his little mind ticks. Uh, so far, what I can gather, and I've only watched maybe, he's pretty new. Um, he's only been around for a few months. Uh, I've watched maybe eight to 10 videos and usually never the way all the way through. And he posts pretty regularly. So I don't have a huge sample size of his work. I spend a little time on it here and there to further my understanding of just how somebody could be incredulous enough to actually buy into the religion of statism and think that the only thing that matters are legal constructs. Anything that's legal is common sense, legitimate, and intelligent. And anything that is outside that box, according to Murby, is nonsensical and foolish and to be insulted. I think he's bright enough to realize that there does in fact exist ways to live life outside of the status box, outside of the guns and cages, judges, cops, lawyers game, but he gives no indication that he uh, takes it into consideration whatsoever or will speak on it whatsoever um, other than to just insult any idea that points outside of that box so whatever um, he's made a couple maybe three videos about me now and mentioned me and a few others and uh, he uh, James Freeman and I seem to be his uh, favorite targets or whatever but uh, yeah I'm just going through all this to show you his thinking and you know his, his response videos are like uh Common Joe, that's what he calls me. Common Joe doesn't know anything. He's being so foolish. <laughs> I'm going to point out his foolishness. And I'm kind of doing the same thing. So I'll let the uh, viewer make up their mind. And hopefully some objective sheep type fence sitters will see this and uh, come to some conclusions on their own. We'll see what happens. Uh, before I begin, I'm not, you know, I don't take any of this seriously. I am never, ever, ever emotionally invested in any YouTube video or a comment. You know, if, if I'm not laughing, I'm kind of bored and don't pay attention, but this guy makes me laugh. So, and it's just interesting how many lawyers on YouTube come out and directly uh, challenge kind of what I do and, and more to the core what like Mark Stevens does with this motion to dismiss for lacking evidence of jurisdiction, right? All right, well, this guy is. So, you want to understand a lawyer's mind a little bit, you can listen to Murby's content. There you go. All right, so I made a, con a comment, right? I was just watching this random video. It didn't really have anything to do with anything until it came across this moment in time where I was like, <gasps> I perked up because he was talking about what we do. I'm going to give my comment. I'm going to play his section, and then I'll get back to my comment, and we'll just kind of wrap things up. So he, he mentions a motion to dismiss and when... And before evidence is presented and and elements and these types of things and uh, so my comment is a summary of what he said so a motion to dismiss can come before evidence is presented if the prosecutor fails to allege all the elements of the crime your words and you'll hear him say those words um, very very close to that and he agrees that this these are his words by the way he agrees this is not an incorrect summary uh, according to both of us now he's gonna get his panties in a twist about this can come before evidence is presented he did in his response video. So let me talk about this a little bit. I'll, I'll uh, pontificate. <laughs> no, just clarify. I'll clarify. 
So there's legal evidence within this corrupt American system we all suffer under, except, well, people like Murby, apparently. And then there's actual logical and ethical evidence. Let me give you an example. A fingerprint would be ethical evidence. Someone commits murder and his fingerprints are never there and they're all over this weapon and the DNA and all that. If it's done through legitimate labs that aren't coerced, all right, then that would be everyone I think would consider just evidence, plain and simple. That is definitely evidence. A speeding ticket, however, we're going to have some controversy because our side would not consider a speeding ticket evidence of jack shit other than just uh, legalized gang-banging thug criminals piece of paper with words written on it that says, I'm threatening you and you're going to pay us money or we're going to threaten you further because I just, I just introduced you to the endlessly escalating threat of violence known as the United States justice system. And you will obey or you will be carried further up that escalator to more and more severe penalties to include imprisonment. And things like comply or die authority given to men with guns like me called arrest warrants. And if you don't comply or you resist effectively enough, we will kill you. Forget this life, liberty, and property protections. You don't have it. You will obey. You will become like Murby. You will bend the knee. You will kiss the ring. And that is what it is. Let me double check my stuff here. Make sure we're good. Yeah, okay. And that's what a speeding ticket is. To us, right? It's just words on paper. Um, nothing like a fingerprint, obviously. Now, not only are there two different types of evidence, now Murphy's going to think there's only one kind, so there's a difference between us. I think there's at least two. Here's another difference. Now, there are, <clears throat> maybe it's not a difference, I don't know. There are many times when evidence is presented, and to who, right? Okay. Now, Murby, before you get upset, I'm not talking about... I'm trying to keep this simple for the viewers. I'm not talking about felonies or indictments. I'm just talking about nonviolent victimless crimes at the misdemeanor level, like the traffic court level, because so many people get traffic court, it's easy for them to relate. All right. For the purposes of this, that's what I'm doing. So, let's see. Evidence is presented at uh, different times. Their claims versus our claims. If a cop pulls you over and gives you a ticket, they, the state, the religion of statism the most famous religion ever conceived and, and integrated, uh, would consider that ticket to be evidence. And the cop gave you this evidence of his authority and his jurisdiction, his rightful you know, uh, actions taken to punish you for whatever it is you're doing, not wearing your seatbelt, looking at a cell phone wrong, you know, going 10 miles an hour over some speed limit arbitrary that they say everyone needs to obey, things like this. Um, then all obviously that ticket will generate some actions by the prosecutor's office, right? Prosecutor's office is part of this. For instance, in Bow's case, Darla Peavy goes to the prosecutor and says, wah, 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 you need to punish Bow for what YouTubers did. All right. Um, the prosecutor generated uh, some documentation. A detective looked into it determined that yes charges are warranted that's a horrible word to use but charges were justified according to him and uh wrote something up uh gave it to a judge a judge approved it signed an arrest warrant and they got bow out from his lunch right and there's evidence going on here okay bow hasn't even been arrested yet and evidence is flying all over the place according to the state all right now after Bow's arrested, oh, he's going to get charges. Well, they, they let him out. He gave him money, whatever. They let him out, and he's going to go to a hearing. And obviously, evidence will be presented there. Okay? But in the totality, Murby, of all of that evidence, even the state's version of evidence, not one single time does the prosecutor, who's making the allegations, right? Not the cop. The prosecutor. Not the judge. It's not his job. He can't wear that hat, at least he's not supposed to. The prosecutor never provides any factual evidence. He provides maybe logical fallacies. He provides maybe coercive, might makes right type evidence. But he never provides anything that will hold up as a fact, factual evidence regarding the element of jurisdiction. Now, Murby agrees jurisdiction is an element. And he agrees with my, um, what I say about 
how in all the times I've dealt with judges and recordings and in person, I've never heard him deny that jurisdiction is an element. So we're in agreement there. Okay. If jurisdiction is an element, and, and Murphy's like, Juris there's two types of jurisdiction. Da, 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 da. No. Jurisdiction is the ability to rule, to, to, to give out consequences, okay? To have the power over a person, a man or woman, all right? Jurisdiction, if it's an element, by golly, shouldn't it be mentioned? Shouldn't it be mentioned? Shouldn't there be a copy of a document that says, this document is in regard to the element of jurisdiction and we have jurisdiction because of this reason that is obviously logical and ethical there was some kind of obligation on the defendant and he broke it so we have jurisdiction now this isn't a hard concept to understand military courts do the same thing international courts can do the same thing but military courts they provide the document of the service member, if you want to call it that, their signature upon entry into the military that says, I will abide by the UCMJ. They, here's your jurisdiction. He signed, he agreed to it, he broke it. That's why we're in court. This court has jurisdiction. Military courts do it. Now, are military courts foolish? Are they silly, nonsensical? Why do they do that? If it's unimportant, they wouldn't do it. This is the fucking military, Merb. Right? They do it. Civilian courts don't. How much more simple do I have to explain this to you? Mil civilian courts don't. Now, you're going to claim they do. They say because it happened at a geographical physical location. And we can provide that. Like with a red light camera or something. Okay, that's a claim that the borders they drew up that existed before any of us, this applies to all human beings within that border because of a reason X, Y, or Z. Your territorial claim of jurisdiction has holes in it. Nowhere in any legislation or anything else or constitution or any of that does it say all people, especially in this time frame, will be bound by these statutes and codes because they happen within a geographical, physical location. And if you cross one of our borders, someone else will be in charge. And the justified reason, logically and ethically for that, is this. Reason X, Y, and Z. There is no reason X, Y, and Z, Murby. Like in the military courts. There is none. That's why we're able to give these courts such a problem, Murby. I'm going to make all of my ethical anarchism articulated channel videos public again and you're going to be able to listen to me give judges hell regarding this exactly now if i'm wrong why do they run from me murby why do they delay me hearing after hearing after hearing after hearing and are never able to arraign me murby in their home turf with their guns me being powerless and sometime with cuffs on they run they ran and they ran and they ran until they dismissed all charges why? How was I able to do that? <laughs> if I'm talking out of my ass, how was I able to do that to multiple American courtrooms and multiple American judges? I mean, I call them judges, but they're really not. They're just gangbangers in black robes who identify as judges and have the power given to them by other men with guns in this label called judge. So how was I able to do that? Because everything I'm talking about here, Murby, is what I used. And it had power, and it worked. I got c clean away with a Class A felony. Whoa, I interrupt this broadcast to bring you a correction. So here I am in editing, and I realized that I just said Class A felony. I just totally misspoke. Didn't catch it. It was a Class A misdemeanor. Oopsie. That's it. Continuing on. Growing way more weed than I was allowed to. Having all kinds of paraphernalia. They raided my house. It took me ten hours to put back in order. You th and I'm a white boy in Hawaii, ruled by Japanese. And Hawaiians wearing badges don't look at me favorably. I had three cases going on at the same time. You think they wanted to dismiss all charges? They gave me four plea deals, Murby, that turned a Class A misdemeanor into six phone calls once a weekend for six weeks to a babysitter. Do you think they wanted to offer me that kind of plea deal? Of course not. Do you think any lawyer could have gotten me that plea deal? Of course not. 
They tried to force three lawyers on me, and I had to get rid of them all, and not a one of them even pretended like that kind of plea offer was even in the realm of possibility. Yet I got it. I got it doing this, Murby. Because whether you think I'm right or whether you think I'm wrong about this issue or that issue, it's not the big picture most important thing. Neither is my ego or anything on YouTube or response videos. What matters is the court of public opinion, you bar member. All right? You knee bending, ring kissing coward. That's what matters and you know it. It's what the people think because the people have you outnumbered 100 to 1. And they're sheep. And we're battling for their favor. Because that's where the power is and we all know it. The vast majority of people that I come across who are sitting on the fence, whose income is not influenced by a government paycheck, agree with me. And it's not me they're agreeing with. It's innate logic and ethics. Any two-year-old understands. You're not the boss of me. And, hey, that's not fair. That's all it takes. I don't care how undereducated someone is. I will convince them of what I'm doing to be the way to go way more times than you will, pal. You will, pal. Because without your guns and cages and coercive powers of the state, you have nothing. You have nothing. You have the Bible applies because the Bible says it applies because of the borders written about in the Bible. It all comes down to jurisdiction. Oh, no, jurisdiction. I'm going to divide it up into a bunch of scattering bar member approved lingo so that people, it's complex and they can't understand it. No, let's keep it simple. Jurisdiction is the ability and power to rule over you. Coercively, through fear. They use fear for political gain. Do you know what that's called? A terrorist. A terrorist uses fear for political gain. And that's the membership of the organization that you belong to. Of course, you don't want to admit that. It must suck to look in the mirror and hear these words because, you know, you invested all that time and money. You probably have, I don't know, still student debt to pay back. And if all this is just a legalized gangbanging horde of needless suffering and the monsters who run it, boy, that would be hard to get another career field when you have no other skills and pay back these expensive student loans, right? Those student loans are put in place to keep you coercible and obedient. Look at the countries that don't have college students coming out with any huge student debt or any debt at all. <laughs> this is why Murby will not go live stream with me. I have offered half a dozen times at least to live stream with this guy. Actually, tonight. I've been doing it for a week. Sunday night. I've been like, hey, Sunday night it's on. Sunday night it's on. He gave me one response. And it accused me of being like a five-year-old. It was a logical fallacy, an ad hominem. While he uses non sequiturs left and right about jurisdiction. All right. Wow. That was quite the rant. So when he says, before evidence is presented, let's be clear when we're talking. Is it the cop, Murby? Or the detective? The prosecutor's office? Is it the judge? Evidence is being presented all the time. Or is it just when somebody gets arrested? When they're processed in jail? Was it, is it during the first hearing? Obviously, by the first hearing, evidence has already been swarming around, right? Now, there's different kinds of evidence. I gotcha. And they're presented at different points in time. I gotcha. For logical reasons, I gotcha, more or less. But we need to clarify just exactly what we're talking about because you accuse me of being silly. And you stay vague about the accusation. That's why I'm getting so specific. Let's just keep it as simple as possible. Even after someone endures the violence of being kidnapped uh, and, and possibly concussed and tased and shot and things like that, here they are at their arraignment, their first hearing, like cattle going to slaughter, one after the other, no consent having pillage and raping going on, financially especially. Someone goes to their arraignment. At that moment in time, has the prosecutor provided any evidence whatsoever regarding this element of jurisdiction that everyone agrees is an element? No. No factual evidence. I can shred everything they put up as evidence 
with simple logical fallacies. Their statutes and codes are what they use, but they have nothing that says statutes and codes apply because of some territory we claim. And oh, by the way, Murby, what if you've got a foreign diplomat who's got diplomatic immunity? Do the statutes and codes apply to him when he's in, within your borders? Or do you ship him off back to his country? Or can he do whatever he wants and get away with it? I mean, it, w it would have a little exception for that and other exceptions, right? If it existed. Oh, it doesn't exist? No words are ever written? It's just presumed? Because it's too late for them to ask for jurisdiction now because they know we'd all say no? Fuck your nonviolent victimless nonsense. Starting with property taxes. Asset forfeiture. Drug wars that treat medical problems like criminal ones and making lives only more difficult. All for profit, all for power, all for control. These are control freaks. These are sociopaths. They are mentally ill individuals who have lost their humanity. They do not feel or value what another human being feels or has to endure and why. They don't care. They care about what serves them and their interests because they are what matters. They are what's important. And if they have to accept a mediocre position on a hierarchy, um, some ladder of power, they will. They will be another man or woman's bitch, if need be, and defend the system because they are takers, not makers. You can make something and... And provide for yourself in this world by providing something of use and value or you can take it from someone else or you can manipulate someone out of it that's what this is their claims to have jurisdiction because it happened within their county or city or state that bucket has holes Murby the applicability of the statutes and codes Murby where do they address that? They can't rely on the Constitution, Murby. You must know it well enough to know that. Four pages, ink and paper, 200 plus years old. Doesn't even try to be a contract, Murby. Let alone talk about people born 200 years later, Murby. You can call, oh, that's not jurisdiction. Common Joe's being silly. Jurisdiction is this. He's going to, I'm going to predict that if he comes out with a response, it'll be either nothing or he'll try to redefine what jurisdiction is claim I'm some simpleton who's never gone to law school and so I don't know a thing about it and be like, oh, that's silly five. He's like a five-year-old. Go on and play sport. Let me let us grown-ups talk about the legal stuff, what real jurisdiction is. It's might makes right, Murby. Can you deny that? Your logic is based on violence, the effectiveness of violence and fear. That's what you base your logic and reasoning on. That's your rational mind. <laughs> I, that was an involuntary laugh because I called you rational. I mean, it's as simple as that. So whether or not it's presented before or after somebody shows up in arraignment, the prosecutor never provides factual evidence regarding the element of jurisdiction because they don't have jurisdiction, Murby, and they know it. We come at it like just as investigators. I don't know, maybe you do have it just to be all nice and professional for the sheep. You know what we'd really like to do, Murby? Pull out a samurai sword and start chopping heads off, Murby. If I could get away with it. If I could get away with it. If you do know somewhere deep-seated in there, outside of all the coercion that's being levied against you, if you do know somewhere deep in there that what I'm talking about matters, about how human beings are treated, about the dignity, the sacred dignity of the individual... If you do have some value in you about that, you know what I'm saying is true. It's might makes right. There's no justified logic or ethics about it. If they don't have factual evidence presented regarding the element of jurisdiction, this is a legalized crime. You are not a lawyer. That person is not a judge. The one over there it isn't a bailiff. This isn't a courtroom. This is a salesmanship for power and profit control by psychopaths. I don't blame you 
for not being able to recognize your particular mental illness. After all, one of the afflictions of this form of mental illness is an inability to recognize it in the first place. You bow to the biggest religion humanity has ever created, called the state, and you obey. And everyone else is a fool. All right, now I'm just going to stop ranting. I think I've said everything I need to say. Ooh, I feel better. <laughs> and I'm just going to go to this. Okay. At all the times I've asked a judge of jurisdiction and element, I've only gotten distractions or a yes. I've never heard a judge in person or recording ever say no, that jurisdiction is not an element. Therefore, has the prosecution ever presented factual evidence regarding the element of jurisdiction? No. They never do because there's no consent, because this is all legalized crimes by a tyrannical organization calling itself government. Sounds very Mark Stevens, right? I've heard him like insult Mark Stevens and his motions to dismiss before, saying that's all nonsense and for idiots, right? That's what started this comment. The same motion to dismiss you so criticized, right, Murby? You just contradicted yourself, fool, and I recorded this video before posting this comment so you can't delete it. I'm going to make a good video over this one. Thanks, Murby. <laughs> so let's go to where I timestamp here. I timestamp at 224. <clears throat> you can listen to it all the way through if you want to. Do not bitch in the comments about how I interrupt it too much. Just go to, let me look at his videos right here. It's called Pining Away, all right? We'll start at 205. It's a very brief section. It only goes to three minutes and 15 seconds. Let's begin. Um, here's, here's my issue with what's going on with Mr. Warden. Mr. Warden is obviously acting as his own attorney. Just an, a, a bold claim. He's acting as his own attorney. Well, look up the word attorney in Black's Law Dictionary. You'll know you, you don't want any part of that word. All right, I'm in editing again. And many of you are not going to look up the word attorney or attorn to see what the heck that means. So I'm just going to look it up here quick for you. Two sources, Merriam-Webster Dictionary, which is not to be trusted, really. I mean, it is, but it's got some status definitions to it. And then the online version of the Law Dictionary, which is featuring Black's Law Dictionary. All right. Okay. Let's start with the common one. Now, just do you want this for yourself? Do you want an attorney? Right? To agree to be a tenant to a new owner or landlord of the same property. Do you want to be a tenant to a lawyer? Do you want a lawyer to be a new owner or landlord over, not you, even though we mean you, property? It's a word that means you are property of what? The state. To agree to be a tenant to a new owner of property. <laughs> even Merriam Webster. Wow. Powerful. Now, what is this law dictionary to a turn? Now, my gosh, look at this legalese. In feudal law. Do you want to go back to anything to do with feudal law over nonviolent victimless crimes in 2018? <laughs> to transfer or turn over to another. Turn what over to this other human being? Can you be specific? Where a lord, oh, we're relying on the scenes where there were lords? Oh, great. Alienated his seniori? <laughs> I don't even know what that word is. Signori, <laughs> maybe someone who uh, his his uh, tenants. <laughs> he might, with the consent of the tenant, and in some cases without, a turn or transfer the homage and service of the latter <laughs> to the alienee or new lord. Some sighting of something. <laughs> in modern law. To consent to the transfer of a rent or reversion. A tenant is said to otorn when he agrees to become the tenant of the person to whom the reversion has been granted. You are, if you're getting an attorney, you're getting a landlord, you're getting a new owner, and you're giving them all the power, hence the power of attorney. I mean, God, I don't even know how much more simple it gets than that. Do you want any piece of that? No. <laughs> Why does someone have to act as their own attorney? Why do you even have to include that sentence? Why is that necessary? Why can't you just say they're defending themselves? Why do they have to be, oh, you're representing yourself? Oh, it's part of the, it's part of the legalese lingo, the salesmanship bullshit show. Okay. 
I defend myself without the assistance of counsel. Oh, I know somebody in this world who I would want as assistance of counsel, but only if he could remain an anonymous and have his voice brought in from an unknown outside source. I, every time I'm in a courtroom, I am without the assistance of counsel. I want nothing to do with an attorney or any bar member who's licensed by my accuser, a fictional entity like Santa Claus. So again, there's value in understanding how bar members think. And this is how they think. Oh, he's acting as his own attorney. Maybe this guy is. Maybe he's, you know, I don't even know this dude, right? I don't know anything about his case, to be honest. Maybe he is putting in paperwork like he's acting like an attorney. If he's acting like an attorney and trying to be his own attorney, how can I disrespect his claims that he is? Okay, go ahead, dude, whatever. <laughs> okay, but out of ignorance, he's, he, he's acting out of ignorance. And if that ignorance was removed, he would agree with me that he's just defending himself and without the assistance of counsel. It's a massive conflict of interest to have your lawyer be licensed by and especially paid by your accuser. Durr! That's like having the Super Bowl where both football teams are playing, right? But one of the teams, their coaches and the referees are all played by the owners of the other team. Paid for and licensed by the owners of the other team. Why don't they set up the Super Bowl that way, Murby? <laughs> These fucking bar member bullshitters. It's hilarious. They've got you so indoctrinated, it's not even funny. You're, you're a zombie without a brain. <laughs> you're poor kids, my God. Jesus. All right. So I don't even know this guy, but he's defending himself without the assistance of counsel. All right, let's move on. And I'm going to tell you why he's acting as his own attorney. This statement that he read that he attempted to use as a motion to dismiss. First of all. <clears throat> okay, so here he goes in with the part about the motion to dismiss. I'm not going to. All of his comments here are not important. It's just for another 45 seconds or so. But I perked up when I heard motion to dismiss. Right, Because I know he's slammed Mark Stevens' motions to dismiss before. He thinks a motion to dismiss because of lacking factual evidence of jurisdiction is a joke. All right. So by his own words, here's what Murphy says about it. <clears throat> uh, motion to dismiss before evidence is presented has to be either based on the charges, like any indictment or any uh, criminal complaint be failing to allege all of the elements of the crime. Okay. So a motion to dismiss can legitimately happen according to Murby. If all of the crime elements of this quote unquote crime or criminal charges are not addressed by his own admission. And in his response video, he still admits it. That's one way or or something else, something like on its face that makes it invalid. Or secondly, when it on its face, <laughs> do you clarify what on its face means? Or you just expect everybody to know? You're, apparently you're talking to people who don't know anything about legalese. So why wouldn't you clarify? Here we go. Beyond that, you don't have a whole lot of room for a, for a motion to dismiss before any facts have been presented now mr warden has found a an expert okay. a law enforcement before facts have expert. been presented oh boy in order to have an issue that's contested be considered a fact it must go through a determination process correct and you would think that would at least be a hearing if not a trial correct facts presented no, it's not factual until there's been a determination process. An arraignment or your, hear, your basic hearings, just because a prosecutor puts it forward does not make it a fact. What kind of common sense is that? If the defendant puts something forward, is that also considered a fact? If not, why not? Do we have a right to a fair and meaningful hearing or not? Apparently not even a fair one because that's not fair. Judges are supposed to be referees, not on the side of the prosecution. Obviously. Obviously. So he calls it before facts are presented. Well, okay, whatever. I don't want to get hung up on the minutia or, or misinterpret what he's saying. It all falls under my point that 
up until trial, prosecutors provide evidence. Okay? And among all of that evidence, they never provide factual evidence regarding the element of jurisdiction, how specifically the, the codes and statutes apply to you. Well, it happened in our border, therefore we have jurisdiction. Okay, show me where it says in your, all your words that you rely upon to form this conclusion. Show me where it says that. Show me where it says the statutes and codes apply because you're physically in this area. And then I'll p plead guilty, pay the fine, and get the fuck out of here. Stop wasting your precious billable hours time, Murby. How about that? Because unless you have it written down somewhere to back up what you're saying, all you have is an opinion. All you have is a presumption. All you really have are guns and jail cells. And you know it. You can't be so stupid as to not realize that. I mean, Murby's so ridiculous. It's almost like he's some kind of a propaganda... Like he's some part of a propaganda machine or effort on YouTube to counter what we're doing. And, and no such thing would ever be effective because I would just shred it to pieces. Just with simple logic and ethics. Like Again, like any two-year-old would understand. Not because I'm some badass. All right? If they don't have jurisdiction, they don't provide any evidence of it, Murby. Everything else is bullshit. Everything else about this is bullshit. Do they presume us innocent? They claim to, Murby. But would you arrest somebody and throw someone in jail if you presume them innocent? I mean, certainly they file charges and arrest people without sufficient factual evidence put into the record first. If somebody murders somebody, there's going to be some factual evidence. You can go ahead and arrest that guy, right? But for these nonviolent victimless crimes, all they need is one cop's opinion and often lies on a piece of paper. They say you're presumed innocent, but they'll beat you up on the way to jail while claiming that. I mean, I could go on and on and on and on and on about every aspect of all the bullshit they fling and call it justice. But I, I, I don't know. I'm getting kind of... What's the point, man? What's the point, man? I mean, I've, I've poked enough holes in his nonsense to where he's either going to respond by trying to redefine words according to legalese words, like in Black Slot Dictionary, or he's not going to respond. But, Murby, this is all the time I'm going to give you, man. This is the only response video I'm going to give you. I'm going to end with this challenge, even though I probably should talk about more. I said I was going to come back to this, but unnecessary. I've gone over it so much, it doesn't even matter. Here's what I'm going to end on, Murby. Just like I've done all this week, I directly, professionally, and with respect this time, and civil discourse, offer or invite you to a discussion live streamed about these issues now there will be no moderator however i insist on maintaining civil discourse meaning no five minute rants if you want to make claims by all means go ahead i'll let you have your choice because i don't need it if you want me to make claims by golly i will it's up to you, all right? But whoever's making the claim can be interrupted with objection point of clarification to clarify your claims of truthfulness about whatever. If I'm claiming and you object point of clarification, I will clarify happily. And we will either agree based on logic and ethics or we will agree to disagree and then we will move on. There will be no five minutes for me, five minutes for you, five minutes for me, five minutes for you. So if you want to make claims, I'll listen. If you want me to make claims, you can interrupt. Live streaming. No editing. No censorship. My real name is out there on YouTube, as is my face. Yours is not. You have every advantage. You have every reason to accept this offer. I am obviously not a five-year-old. And yet you won't. Why? Because you know you will lose. You will lose in the court of public opinion, which is where all the power is, and that's what YouTube is about. 
a revolution that will end cowards like you. Now, I think I provide factual evidence of your cowardice in logical terms. Don't call me ad hominem. I know your ilk. I know it well. I've dealt with many of you, and there's not a one of you that I haven't smashed verbally into pieces who have just quit, turned over the chessboard, and stormed away, upset while I laugh. While I laugh. So, the gauntlet's thrown down, Murby. But this is the only video from me you're going to get unless it's a live stream. If anybody asks me about you, I'm just going to point to this video. I hope you have a happy Father's Day. Because <laughs> I know I am. So long. Thanks for listening, y'all. 38 minutes. Woo! Later.